and welcome to episode three of Power On Podcast. Woo! And I am one of your hosts, Taylor. I'll just skip the whole Mudagata thing because it's Taylor. <laughs> and my co-host, Sushi, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. It's uh, 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 it's early in the morning, but it's nice. It's not. I'm not drowsy or anything. And speaking of drowsy, we have our first guest. Please introduce yourself. Hey guys, Matt, basically a YouTube follower of a lot of people on uh, the gaming community. I don't really have my own YouTube channel, but uh, enjoy playing some games. And as Taylor said, I'm really drowsy, even though it's six thirty or so here at night. <laughs> But yeah, no, enjoy playing games and happy to be on the podcast. Thank you for uh, coming on. It's uh, the time difference is a little hard to maneuver around at times, but thankfully we were able to work something out. More fun that way. <laughs> yeah. So, huh? With that being said, I guess uh, the topic for today would be video game items that we like, or items in video games that we like, right? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, uh, do you think maybe the guest should go first, or maybe... I think that's a good spot? idea. Yeah, so, Matt, please start us on the spot here. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> um, so, for uh, the first one I had listed here, uh, I think I'm probably tugging a bit on uh, Taylor's coattails because of a recent video he did. I decided to go with uh, Rock's Feather from uh, Zelda Link's Awakening. Specifically because it's like the only instance that you get to actually jump around freely as uh, Link. I really, I don't know, I, any game that lets you jump is automatically awesome. And since Zelda usually doesn't have like a predetermined jump item, it's pretty awesome. What do you guys think? I know Taylor likes uh, Link's Awakening, so he probably has something to say. Actually, uh, I had that on my list, but thankfully I have a rather large list, so I can cross that off my list. So, <laughs> but I, yeah, I, I really love that first time you were able to jump as Link was just so awesome. And to, you get the, the rocks feather so early that I just spent a lot of time jumping on Goombas and dungeons. And, you know, when you get the dash and you can dash later in the game, you can jump a lot farther and stuff. I just thought that was a really nice mechanic to add to Zelda that they don't kind of keep and abuse because I could see that getting really frustrating in like the 3D. <laughs> So, okay. and uh, Sushi, what do, you, what do you have to add? Because I know you like Link's Awakening as well. Yeah, that's one of my favorite Zeldas also, and that was actually the first one on my list as well, so um, thanks for stealing it, Matt. <laughs> Snap! And I have a much shorter <laughs> list than you. <laughs> no, I agree. Um, obviously, Zelda 2 was the 2D Zelda from the side that did have jumping built into the mechanics, but this was the first top-down Zelda to incorporate jumping, which was really amazing. I remember playing it and being really surprised that that was going to be one of the items in the game. And it, it was nice, too, because when you jumped on the Goombas, instead of stabbing them, they would actually, they would always give you hearts. They would always give you hearts. So fantastic. <laughs> Some of those, those side stages were weird because they were all Mario-themed. Yeah, because you have the, the piranha plants and Goombas and, uh, what was there, did they have anything else? Yeah, they had the, the Thwomp. Oh yeah, that's one. That's right. Oh man, I've played cool. forever. I'd say, Sushi, you played it. You were playing it recently. When's the last time you played it? Matt? Uh, I played it a couple days ago, but yeah, I've I've kind of put it down. Mm. And how about how about yourself, Matt? When was the last time you? Played I have it? not played it in years. I literally kind of wanted to pick it up again after I watched your video on it, but I'll have to find some time. So my video failed. It wasn't strong enough to. It wasn't inspiring. <laughs> It just it just made me want to go out and listen to the music again. Yeah, like awesome music. <laughs> Total um, Heights all the way. Yes, yep, all the way. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, Sushi, do you want me to go? Same yeah, why don't you go next? Okay. I honestly don't remember the English word for it, so hope, or the, the title for it, so hopefully you can you guys can remember for me. But Silbert, the, the machine that you could use to travel back in time, or forward in time in Chrono Trigger. Oh, Epoch? Epoch! Epoch, or whatever. Yeah, Epoch. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that. I, like, because in the Japanese version it's called Silbert, like Silver Bird, and they just kind of shoved it together. But Right. <laughs> so, I thought that was awesome. I just, being able to kind of 
go back in time, forward in time, without having to go to the gates, and like, just the whole bit about just about the machine itself, how you get it, leading up to it and everything, was just kind of like, it was just really great, I thought. I don't know, how, what do you guys think of think of that, uh, Matt, <laughs> I guess? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I definitely like the idea of time travel, and definitely uh, Chrono Trigger was an innovator in that realm. So the idea of having your own ship, basically, that allows you to uh, go back in time, and even in some cases get different endings depending on if you want to go fight uh, Lavos ahead of time when you're supposed to, so you get a different ending or like whatever. I thought that was very cool as an element of not only like the item but the plot. So definitely a cool item to have. And you, Sushi? Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I think it's one of the, the coolest, um, I guess, machines in, in any game. And uh, just as you said, Matt, that it can play a vital part in the ending of the story, whether you use the machine to crash into Lavos, or if you use whatever, the bucket, or what's the third one? I'm not sure. I forget. <laughs> yeah, I forget. Oh, oh, at the Millennial Fair, you can go through the other time gate. There's so many endings in that game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's one of the, the few multiple ending games that really, I thought, nailed it down pretty well. I think because they didn't go so overboard. Yeah, there's a lot of endings, but what is it, maybe 13 or 14? No, I have no idea. <laughs> it's not something such as Star Ocean 2, which supposedly has 100 or something? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, I, I think it's just marginally changed, but I guess 13 specific endings in Chrono Trigger. Mm. I could be wrong on that number. We'll look it up and we'll, we'll hang you to the fire if you're wrong. <laughs> All right, well, that's that's fair enough. I'm going to hang Matt for stealing Rock's feathers. So. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, but, yeah, that's that's really it, and I'm glad you touched on that point, Sushi, because I, I personally always kind of, uh, to avoid the really long battle before it, I always just crashed Silbert into, into Lavos. That's yeah. a big fuck you more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't care about your item? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like, it, I, like when I, whenever I flew Silbert into like that time period, I would always just fly it instead of using the bucket or something. So, but yeah, <laughs> I didn't care. Fair enough. <laughs> so, the time pass over to you, Sushi. I'll stick with Chrono Trigger. Actually, uh, my favorite item is the the title item, the Chrono Trigger. I think it's one of the most important items, obviously, in the game. I'm sure most people are not going to feel ruined by a spoiler that what happens halfway through. Chrono dies, and if you want to revive him, you need the Chrono Trigger to get him back. You need a clone, you need the Chrono Trigger, and you need to get past Death... Was it Death Peak? Yes. And so it's it's a very important item that you can either choose to use or choose to just abandon. What do you guys think? I definitely think uh, as an item that plays a role in saving the main character... And also, not even, once again, with the multiple endings, you can choose to you know save him or not save him. It's interesting that you, you need multiple items. I don't know if there was a lot of games during that time that you required like to do extensive amount of, I guess, fetch questing, as we call it today, to uh, revive your uh, hero. What do you think, Taylor? The I liked it, except for the part where you had to uh, mimic the, the clown or whatever. That, I, for some reason, always kind of... I, I was terrible at it, so I was always, like, really, like, antsy during that part. But the only thing that kind of weakens it for me, I guess, w is a scene from Chrono Cross. If you've played Chrono Cross. Hmm. Are we talking about the scene where you get to see the characters who trigger? Or uh, which scene are you talking about? Well, where, where uh, Lynx comes out and says it. That you are the, the Chrono Trigger or something like that. Oh, really, really, okay. Yeah. Oh. At least thought that really? was corny. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I'm sorry. I really like Chrono Cross. <laughs> I might be in the uh, few minority of this, but I really like it. <laughs> I like the game. It's just that scene to me, just kind of really, I thought was kind of, I don't know, uh, <laughs> just for, it ruined the moment for you. <laughs> yes, and so if, whenever I think of the item of Chrono Trigger, I think more of Chrono Cross, and I think more of that scene in particular, so I kind of always have this, ah, I like the game, but I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> you have a nasty taste in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chrono Cross will do that to a lot of Chrono Trigger fans, I think. <laughs> well, did you ever play the, uh, oh, what is the, 
the hell's this? Radical Dreamers? Yeah, Radical Dreamers. Have you ever played that? Uh, I've only played, like, the introduction portion. Oh, okay. That, that's a really great segue into Chrono Cross. I think that helps a lot. But since it didn't come out in English, it doesn't help any. <laughs> yeah. And it only came out as not even a cart, though. It came out as a downloadable title, I think, wasn't it? On their satellite view or whatever it is for the Super Nintendo. Uh, that might be true. I can't remember. I don't think it was a physical cart, so it was even harder to obtain if you didn't have this service. <laughs> yeah, so they, they did a good job of keeping this out of the hands of many people. <laughs> uh, any last words on that, Sushi, or...? No, I think we should move along back to Matt there. Back to me, okay. Um, I'm going to push it back to Zelda real quick with the Pegasus boots. And I noticed when I was going through uh, my list, I had a couple which involved you know, your ability to run faster. My first one's the Pegasus boots, which you get in uh, a Link to the Past. Uh, you get them pretty early on, and I don't know, the, the feeling of just running through the town and stuff like that at super speed, and hopefully not running into anything, I know I always like the rush of being able to make your guy move faster, or like in some cases do more damage by charging into people, or breaking walls down to save a bomb. Uh, I think that that actually helped the game a lot, because if you did not have that in uh, Link, uh, Link to the Past, I think it would have really hurt the game, and it made it really silly just because of how big the world is. And I think because of that, when you get into the 64 with Ocarina of Time, it kind of, I honestly think it hinders it a little bit, just because, yeah, you get you can get Epona, but if you don't know how to get Epona when you're first playing the game or something, it makes that Hyrulean field a little slow to me. Especially because sure. there's, like, nothing there. Yeah. There's that one wandering whale, male man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then there's the, the oh, what the hell are those, those, those plants, the flying plants. You know what I'm talking about, the ones that go into, the submerge into the ground and they come back up. Mm. I know which one you're talking about, and I forget the names, though. Yeah, they have some sort of name. But, uh, and, I don't know, I wish they would have had a dash function. And I know it would have been kind of difficult to pull off, but I wish they would have had, carried that on earlier in the when they went into the 3D realm with Nintendo, uh, the Nintendo 64. So, uh, Sushi? Yeah, I like the Pegasus boots, uh, especially in Link's Awakening, just because they allow you to jump so much further with Rock's Feather. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, but, combination there. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the things that Link's Awakening did that the other Zeldas hadn't really done at that point, was being able to put items together, I guess. Yeah, because you have your A and your B, and you get to combine the two. Right. But, yeah, that's all I got for that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Carrying on with your uh, picking up speed or making your character move faster, I wanted to actually even though I completely segued wrong in that. Making your character move more freely, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, the spring jump from Mega Man Legends. I was going to say this, the skates, but then I changed to the spring jump, so <laughs> that's why I thought that. But the spring jumps from Mega Man Legends, because being able to jump onto buildings and accessing a whole new level of the game that you were not able to get to earlier on, I thought that was really cool. <laughs> so... No, so I played Legends, actually, so... What I, is I, wrong I, with you? A, a lot, actually. A lot. <laughs> no, I, I've just never got around to playing them. Um, yeah, I, I remember seeing them when they were first released and stuff, but I just, uh, you know, wasn't didn't have a lot of money, I guess, to pick them up at the time. I'm not really sure why. Soulless. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> How about you, Matt? I, wa I want to stay really quiet, because I was a Mega Man and Mega Man X kid growing up, not so much Legends. So uh, I'm also in that boat. I, I have them, but I haven't played them yet. <laughs> well, that's worse yeah. than me, even then. Yeah! Well, t t Taylor knows how I am. We uh, both the yeah. same way. <laughs> so I understand. Play the damn games! Oh. So I will, I will. <laughs> spring jump. You get the spring jump, and you can... It, like, doubles or something along that line. So you jump. And so you'll be going through the... the I think it's... The town's called Catalogs. I know the island's called Catalogs Island, but I think the town is too, maybe? I hope? And you have, you know, two-story buildings and stuff that you can actually, with the spring jump, jump onto and stuff. And it's just really cool to be able to traverse the city on top of the building and stuff. Kind of like Batman or something like that, but very cartoonish. <laughs> so. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it was really fun. So, I, I really like it. You know, it brings back nice, warm memories. So, uh, <laughs> Sushi... 
on you. Uh, sure. I've chosen the spread gun from the Contra series. Oh, excellent. I think that thing is pretty vital. If, if you want to be a good Contra player, you really have to know where the spread gun is pretty much on every stage and how to use it properly. I think a lot of players, when they first play Contra, they get the spread gun, but they don't know that it's it's almost more of a defensive weapon in a way, especially the early part of the series where a lot of the the enemies will just kind of randomly run out and jump at you. You really need to be mindful of how to time the spread gun properly so that you don't waste it and that it only shoots the small cluster of bullets instead of the big widespread that it can get. It's just an awesome weapon too and just so, so useful. Have you, I don't know, you guys played Contra or? I, I love Contra, <laughs> but I haven't played it. I, I only played up to Alien Wars, so. Okay, so three. Right, and I, oh, I, I always remember having fights with people about who got the spread whip, who got the spread shot. <laughs> well, the better player always got the spread gun. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, well, we, the thing was is that it wasn't always the better player I was arguing with. It was more of kind of like, you, you get my, my brother or you know, some yeah. friends that honestly weren't that good, and then they'd be like, ah! the spread gun and then they die, die like, up. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm stuck they holding the laser lives. yes yeah exactly and I'm stuck holding the laser yeah. so yeah. how about you Matt um, definitely the spread gun is uh, vital for the early games uh, The probably the Contra game I played the most out of was uh, 3 as well and okay. I just like the idea that you can uh, you have two items slot, so you can have the spread gun in one and another item yeah um, so it and it, I think it was a bit more kind about giving two spread guns or so per level, so each person could get one. Right. Um, but I definitely like the idea of getting to hold two items. I, I'm trying to remember another item I really liked in that game, um, besides the spread gun. I think there was homing rockets, which were really good. Right, those um, were good. And the, the laser wasn't too good, because it was only good for close range, if I recall. And I, I remember playing a bit of four, which was on the DS, and yeah, that one that one's a real pain because you have to uh, manage two screens. It's pretty tough. Yeah, I I think I played it with a friend who's like really good with it, but if you play with somebody who's not good at it, you're gonna get your continues all taken away. Right, right. <laughs> I actually got so good at four that I um I could beat it without continuing, and I think I'd finished the game with twenty lives or something without any cheats or anything. I was getting really really good at four, but it took me over a year and a half or something to get really good at it. Yeah, you have to practice with that game because it's, it's a lot of like paying attention, not just the bottom screen, top screen. And, oh, man. It's a yeah, lot lots of, of bullets got stuck between the screens and you wouldn't see them and stuff. It's really annoying. Well, I also liked uh, 4 because it had the, uh, what was it, the grappling kind of bionic commando grappling hook to get up and down, Yeah, which was, yeah. I, I thought, really cool as well. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Really useful. Mm -hmm. All right, why don't we uh, continue off of Contra there. How about uh, you again, Matt? Um, sort of a, a series that uh, spawned, I guess, from Contra. I'm going way down in my list, but uh, Metal Slug. Nice. Uh, specifically Metal Slug 2 with uh, the flamethrower, because uh, I really liked, uh, there's the, the zombie levels and the mummy levels and what have you, and just burning those uh, zombies and uh, mummies with the flamethrower was so satisfying in that game. Everything was really satisfying, all the, all the weapons were. But specifically the flamethrower, seeing people like running away on fire and stuff like that was very, very satisfying, to me at least. Um, how about uh, you, Sushi, since you really peaked up with uh, Metal Slug? Yeah, I really like Metal Slug too, and you're right, the flamethrower on those zombies is pretty awesome. I do remember there was the flame shot in the first game, but I don't remember if the guys would, would kind of combust into flames as they did in the second game. Uh, they, they might have, I, I don't remember, but the flame shot is really, really good. I really like the shotgun, too, because the guys just explode and their bones kind of fly everywhere. Metal Slug's just crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. really fun. The anthologies on, on the PS2 and the Wii are, are really great collections. Mm, on PSP on as well. PSP, yeah. yeah, I've got the PSP one as well. Honestly, I've never played a Metal Slug game. Wow. <laughs> it's just There's so many of them, and you know they're pretty abundant in... Pretty much every arcade, there's probably one version of it. So, yeah. But I'm not an arcade person. Well, it's not that I'm not an arcade person. It's just fair, fair enough. I, I, a like growing up, I didn't go to arcades, and 
nowadays I don't really go to arcades either. Like, I like rhythm games, but I don't know. I just never really... It's not that I have anything against it, but I just never really got into to playing it, so... Home versions are a lot better, usually, just because you can keep dying and you don't have to put the money. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I found when I got uh, when I actually played the home versions of Metal Slug, it, it wasn't as satisfying because, you know, when you play it in the arcade, you're really tense, but you're a little yeah. more sloppy in the... Uh, the uh, home versions, because, like, you don't really care because you have infinite lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you got to turn it into a drinking game with a buddy, and then, and then it gets really fun. <laughs> well, the, the game is meant to take your quarters, but it's so yeah. satisfying and fun that it's, you know, you don't even mind. For sure. Okay, so how about we pass it back to Taylor here? Okay, uh, let's see. I have a list here. I'm thinking of a good one. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, something so basic and so necessary in our daily or day to day living that is food from oh, Gauntlet. I thought, I thought you were going to say toilet paper. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I was going to uh, food in Gauntlet. Now, I don't know if either of you played the old Gauntlet games on the regular Nintendo, but I loved playing both 1 and 2 and hearing the uh, the little narrator or whatever say, like, the warrior is about to die, and then going, and you hear that, da 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 Elf needs food. <laughs> <laughs> Elf needs food, badly. Or, or, or the, uh, when you shoot the food, too. Oh, God, that was so, that was so just depressing when you'd hear it, like, uh, the, the narrator say, the warrior shot the food, and you're like, no, damn it, warrior. So, uh, <laughs> the food is so pivotal in that game just because it increases your time limit, but it's, uh, it's just so... When you see, like, a room full of food, you're like, yes, God, yes. So, I don't know. Sushi, what, what, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I didn't really play a lot of the old, old Gauntlet games. The one I got into a lot was Gauntlet Legends, which was, at first, an arcade game as well. Uh, really fun game, but I, I didn't really play the old ones. I can't remember if, the, if Legends would complain about... I'm sure it did. I'm sure it said, you know, Warrior needs food or or whoever needs food, but I, I don't remember that well. How about you, Matt? That was on... That was on the N64, wasn't it? I can't remember. It was in the arcade what, what first, it? and then yeah. I think it went to N64, and then there were some other ports later on as well. Yeah, um, I think I remember playing Legends as well. I played more of the originals, but not when they originally came out. But I didn't really play them quite as extensively, probably, as other people have. I, I did enjoy them. Um, but of course, food is uh, key in a lot of games. So sure. definitely a good choice. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't add more to the uh, the metal slug bit there. Um, That's okay. It's all good. Food, food is delicious. What can you say? <laughs> yeah. So. Toilet paper is essential, though. I oh, can just sure. leave, I guess. I actually can't think of any games where you can get toilet paper. I'm sure there are a bunch, but... There probably is. I don't remember. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, any, any, <laughs> anywho, moving on. Uh, sushi, what, what do you have? All right, I'll take the ball again. I went with the cross, or I guess the boomerang, or cross, whatever you want to call it, from Castlevania. Oh, excellent. Nice. Yeah, that's probably my favorite sub-weapon out of all of them. I just find it the most useful most of the time. It works really well on bosses if, if you've got the perfect timing and, and you know where it stops in range so that you can kind of hit the boss for extra hits and stuff. That's just by far, I think, my favorite sub-weapon. It's really, really cool. I really liked it in Harmony of Dissonance because in that game, if you combine it with the wind spell, you could use it as a kind of uh, circular shield around... Uh, what was that in Harmony of Dissonance? Just Belmont? I can't remember his name, but... I just really like that. Weapon. Yeah, I really like that weapon a lot. I don't know if you guys chose that one as well, or. Um, I guess I'll take the reins here. Uh, I, I was trying to think of a sub weapon from Castlevania. I didn't end up putting a sub weapon on specifically because the the cross is excellent because you know it has the straightforward and it comes back, so it, it has two hits as you were saying. And then if you have you know the the two block or the three block, you can throw multiple, so it's it's devastating. Right. Um. I like the axe because it has the arc, so you can hit the uh, the enemies above. Right. So I like that one as well. And uh, uh, in the first game, or at least the NES games, the uh, what was it? The holy water was essential 
because of uh, the, the graphical lagging it would cause so you could get multiple hits off and freeze the enemy. <laughs> so I, I wanted I wanted to pick the uh, Holy Water. I didn't end up putting any of them on because I liked them all almost between those three. But okay. I, I understand the uh, the cross was really good. And I also like the uh, the item crush uh, for the cross. I think in, Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that thing's the, cool. The PC Engine one where a bunch of crosses come up. Right, and right. you get a giant cross behind you. So, yeah, it's really good. Are we at least Taylor. in agreement about the knife being pretty crappy then? <laughs> yeah, I hate the knife. <laughs> <laughs> the, the knife is terrible. Uh, I'm surprised you kind of like the X, uh, Matt, just because I, other than the in the orig- the first Castlevania with the Bat Boss, I don't know of any others that it's really good against. It's good against Dracula. Is it? Especially in 3, because Dracula's got those moving platforms in 3 where he's in his final form. The axe is by far the best weapon. Yeah. You have to oh, hit his head, don't you? Yeah, you do. Uh, I didn't... Hmm. Honestly, I never got far enough in 3. I was terrible at 3. I love 3, but I'm not very good at it. 3's a tough one. So, uh, I, I always liked the cross because the cross was great against uh, death. Yeah, especially first, death. Oh, God. That, like, going up to death was a pain in the tail, and then finally getting to mm. him, and then him throwing those sights around and stuff. Oh, I I think I raged a lot during, during that time, so the cross Battle became... Yeah, yeah, The cross became, it became a savior for me. <laughs> mm. All right, why don't we move on back to Taylor, I guess, then. Is it back to me already? I think so, yeah. Or, uh, uh, Matt, is it Matt? Is it Matt? you? Sorry, you're, I forget. You're jumping on an order, but that's, that's the... okay. Going to me. Um, you, you're wanting me to go. The Ice Wand, and I know you kind of tried to stick away from like the main weapon for people, sushi, but the it, this isn't really kind of a weapon. Yeah, in a way it is, but the Ice Wand from the ga- puzzle game Fire and Ice. I've never even heard of that. <laughs> I'm just being dead serious. Fire and Ice, what is that? It just sounds like a bad wrestling tag team or something. <laughs> it's a puzzle game where you try to put out flames by creating blocks of ice. Okay. And the thing is, is that when you cast, when you make the block of ice, it's not uh, directly horizontal. It's off. It's down a block. It's uh, at, a, like an, at an angle. Okay. Down. And so what you try to do is you try to create blocks of ice and then make the certain blocks of ice disappear to push singular blocks of ice into flames. And it's a puzzle game. I think I'd have to see this video to really get the concept. Have you played this, Matt? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a game that Taylor made by himself. It's not. Game. I swear to God, it's not. It's, a, it's an NES puzzle game. And it's got really good music, too. I really like the music for it. And if you run into the flames or if you fall into a flame or something, you have to restart the level, and you just try to you just try to put out all the bad flames because it's like some sort of... It's Iceland, or it's, it's some sort of ice or snow so kind of... So there's good flames and bad flames? No, there's only bad flames, really. And there's, there's, there's only no, bad flames. Yeah. <laughs> so, when you say ice and puzzle and NES, the only game I can think of is Kickle Cubicle. I don't know what that is. Yeah, that that's was also a puzzle too. game. Yeah, that's an obscure one. But I remember a kid having that game, and I when I finally found it, I had to rush out and buy it. That's a really fun puzzle game, too. Huh, I see. All right, well, I guess no, <laughs> no comments on that. We've never even heard of that game, so... <sighs> well, I'll, I'll hold you to your word. It better exist. Yeah, it does exist. I swear to God Almighty. I will show you links after... Afterward. I, I, sw- All right. er, I swear. <laughs> it's a game. I expect it. <laughs> All right, all right. How about you, Matt? Um, okay. Uh, I'll I'll stay on uh, Castlevania. Uh, I'll I'll name off two here. One sure. is from uh, Order of Ecclesia on the DS. Uh, they have a lot of glyphs in that game, and specifically, you get uh, this flying glyph at the very end of the game. I had to look up what it was called. I don't even know if I'm going to say it right, but uh, the Bola Ticus glyph or something like that. Um, it basically allows you to sprout wings on your back, and you can fly around freely. So I, I thought I really like that item just because you know it allows you to fly around, and they kind of keep it to the very end where you like you've already explored almost everything. Right. So it, it's it almost feels somewhat pointless, 
because there's probably a couple secrets you can find with it, but I really like, you know, the idea you can fly around and you get it in a nice open area. Um, have any of you play, you've played uh, Order of Ecclesia? Uh, I have it, and I, I mean, I opened it, but I started playing something else, so I, I forget why. I was, I was going to replay all the DS titles in, in order and then play that finally, but I, I just played the first 15 minutes or something of it. Hmm. I personally, I for some reason I can't get into the DS games. Mm. Uh, I don't know what it is. I've played Portrait of Ruin, but that's the only one I've been able to actually like, play and beat. The other one, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's just uh, for some reason it just doesn't. I don't enjoy it as much as I like the older ones. I, I like the original platformers, but of uh, all the uh, different uh, Metroidvania or whatever you want to call them. Uh, Castlevania games. I really like Order of Ecclesia. You, you could give it a try because it's kind of removed from all the other. It doesn't have like a, a story or a game you have to play before it to get into it. And the glyph system where you basically suck out glyphs from uh, monsters that you kill is, is a lot of fun. So you get a lot of things. You can combine glyphs and stuff. So it's pretty fun. Um, the other one is a, a little more retro uh, with the vampire killer whip. But specifically the one from uh, Super Castlevania 4 where you get the uh, directional whipping. Yes. In all directions. Or you can let it hang and, like, you know, let your whip, like, flap around a bit. It's, it's a little <laughs> strange, but it's, it's, I know, I know you, you found that funny, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's an awesome whip. It's probably the best one, and I don't know why they didn't continue to use it in some of the following installments. That's my favorite Castlevania game, actually, by far, even. I love the music. I love the platforming segments in that. I love that, as you said, the whip can go in eight directions or can be kind of skipped around as a shield almost. Mm. Uh, it's just great bosses, just a great retooling of, I guess, the first game. Just an awesome, awesome game. I like uh, 4, too. Uh, did, did anybody else find the final boss a little easy, though? Yeah, most of the game is actually relatively easy, but... Okay, uh, as long as I'm not crazy, because I, I really thought that, that one was no, easy. I think, I think you're right, Dracula has two forms in that only, and that mm -hmm. it's really quite straightforward. There's, there's a couple of hard stages in the game, but overall it's not too hard. But yeah. there's, a couple long, there's a couple of stages where there's a long stretch in between save points, so if you die you have to keep redoing it. So it depends, I guess, you know, those older games were on memorization and reflexes. Yeah, I agree. Them. But yeah, that's a good choice with the the vampire killer and as you said, letting it flop around. Let <laughs> 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 Yeah. You had to go back to that, didn't you? I did. I had to go back to that. Use protection, kids. <laughs> yeah. on, on your vampire killer for sure. <laughs> on your vampire killer. <laughs> yeah. So but uh yeah, I I thought adding that mechanic of being able to go in eight different directions or, you know, kind of just flop it around. And <laughs> now I can't think of any other word for it now. I, I usually say <laughs> skipping the whip, but it, it's kind of as if you were skipping it. It just kind of it just kind of hangs there and then you can kind of... <laughs> it goes limp. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Viagra for whips. Yes. <laughs> I like what the other Belmonts use. Apparently Simon in that game didn't know anything about Viagra. I guess not. I guess you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, is it on to you now, Sushi? Uh, sure. <laughs> I have... Taylor, you and I talked about the other day a few sports games, and you had mentioned to me Mutant League Football. And I thought, yeah, that's a really great game. And I think I had countered back to you with Mutant League Hockey. And Mutant League Hockey has one of the kind of coolest weapons I guess you can get is people randomly throw stuff on the ice for the players to pick up and use as weapons against each other and there's a chainsaw in that game and the chainsaw is really really useful and really helpful for killing off all of your opponents in, in the game and basically if your centerman gets it he can stand at uh, the faceoff circle and basically keep bashing the other centerman until he dies and you can continually do this if you can keep getting face-offs or just kill all the other team team's players and they'll just automatically forfeit the game. You don't even have to score any goals. And you just can keep winning like that. It's really, really funny. Really fun with two players, actually. So the chainsaw. 
I don't know if you guys have played that game or not. But. Unfortunately, I was a Super Nintendo kid, and I believe that was only on the Genesis, wasn't it? Both those games? Yeah, both of them were only on the Genesis. Yeah, so I never got to play them, but I know exactly the game you're talking about. It does look like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why they've, EA's never bothered to remake that series at all. It seems it would be fairly easy to just take their their hockey or football engines and just change some of the player models, but I don't know, maybe they don't think there's demand. They should do some Madden DLC for that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really funny, actually. Be, people would probably buy it. I'm sure people would. I think it'd be hilarious. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Punching guys' heads off and stuff. I was going to say, I have played Mutant League football, but I didn't get to play hockey. And I think it's just because being from Ohio, it's a bit more focused, I would say, on football than hockey. Right. Ohio State. Yeah. Well, no, not really. But <laughs> the Buckeyes. <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> I have enough family that hurts <laughs> oh, yeah, Sorry. So. Uh, but <laughs> that, that makes sense. So it makes sense. Football was still cool though because football had that audible that you could automatically kill the ref. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that was pretty awesome. And there was the exploding, the exploding ball. You could throw it and, and it would explode as soon as it touched any player. So there's still a couple of funny things in the football. Football was fun. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so unfortunately, I haven't got to play hockey. Which one would you say would be more fun, or is it kind of? Um, just, uh, I think the the think? hockey is is more fun. It's a little more freewheeling, and on generally hockey games, I've always found that people that don't play video games can get into a hockey game a lot easier than other sports games, just because you don't really have to know what you're doing except for pass and shoot, basically, and maybe body check. It's a little straightforward. Yeah, much more straightforward than than something such as Madden, where you've got to pick the play and you've got to watch where the players are running and you've got to know the routes or it's it's a lot more complicated. Mm. Okay, I see. But that's enough about Mutant League. Uh, let's go back to... I think I kind of manipulated the circle there, didn't I? Yes, Why don't you, you guys choose between you for, for who's next? Bouchers of the Death! Bouchers of the Death, I don't really pick an know item, one. Pick an item and let's see who whose item's better. Okay, well... Um... Who... Let's see. Do uh, you want me to go first, then? Yeah, go for it. Okay, all right. Pick an item. I have to pick a good one that'll trump his. Um, <laughs> let's see I'm here. Judging. <laughs> I'm judging. I'm judging. I am torn between two of them. And I think I'm going to go with the Weltall from Xenogears. Ah, oh, very good choice. So, I, uh, uh, Xenogears is definitely one of my favorite games. Just... In general, I, I know some people don't like it too much, too much text or too yeah, too much text and all that sort of thing. But I don't know the 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 story and having Weltall kind of evolve through the story and how it gets so much more awesome and so how so much more powerful and stuff. I always like, thought that was great and how it connects with Faye is just a really really nice yeah. <laughs> and dynamic. It's black. Yeah, dynamic. That's a good word for it. And it's oh, yeah. black and it smashes things. And, yeah. and let's see yeah. the counterpoint from Matt. Counterpoint. Mm, I, I'm kind of torn between two as well. I think I'll go specifically with... Um, I don't remember what the item was specifically called, but the... Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. The, the, I, I could go with another one, but I'm going to go with this one. The uh, item that allows you to turn into a monster in uh, Ease 2, which basically allows you to go into enemy bases and you can... Uh, talk to all the monsters and they give you dialogue, you know, that they're trying to find a doll, but lo and behold, you're talking to them right now, but you're a monster. Um, so it allows you literally at any point in the game to turn into this monster and you can talk to all the monsters. They won't attack you and they'll have unique dialogue. So it's kind of funny to see the opposite end of, uh, you know, what the bad guys are thinking, I guess, or the enemies that you're killing, because they all have their own unique personality. So I always found that really funny with the monster transformation. I don't know if it's like a ring or a, a magic spell or a staff or something like that. I just really like that in Ease 2. So what do you think, Sushi? I, I'm in the same boat as you. I actually totally forget what item that is. I do remember the, the scene you're talking about uh, quite vividly, actually, but I just can't remember what is the item for that. And it's actually, as you said, pretty funny to see the things that they say and just, oh, I've got to protect this door, no one can get through this door, and then you just walk by the door because you're a monster. Yeah. yeah, and you can use it at any point, not just at that one point you need it, but you can use it at any point in the game to right. talk to a monster if you really want to or not want to fight 
somebody. It's yeah, for sure. Funny. I'm guessing Taylor knows this since he's a big E's fan. So. Honestly, I don't like to. Oh, <laughs> I, I, because of that scene, I really like. I like to up to a point, but when you get turned into a monster and you have to go through the temple and everything and get back out, that really wore on me. Really, I, I yeah, I did not like that. Like two, I like, like I love I love two's opening. Like two's <laughs> opening is probably my favorite opening, but when I get once I get to that point playing it, I get really just not it, it just I don't like it so much once it gets to that. And I, I just, I don't know what it is. Something about it when I was playing it just really irked me. Well, and I'm I the judge here. So, <laughs> I like Xenogears, but I'm going with Mad. No, that's fine, that's fine. That's, that's a good I'm choice. Uh, so, I mean, whatever. It's, it's just really interesting to hear you didn't care for that part very much. Oh, yeah, I, I it, it aggravated me to no end. <laughs> it's like, I, Ease is aggravating at times, though. It's, it's really hard to figure out some of the puzzles. Hmm, for sure. Without cheating at, at points, it's it's a pretty tough game. Both I've only played one and two specifically, but they're pretty tough. Mm -hmm. Now I've played most of them that have been released uh, in English, um, but that that point always kind of stuck out to me. It's something you know, it's it's so out there. Like there's not many games that allow you to just talk to every monster in the 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 game and give you unique dialogue back. Right. So it's pretty amusing. But we didn't get to really touch on uh, Taylor's uh, Xenogears point. So uh, I have to say that I'm, I'm kind of with uh, Taylor that it is, well, I know he doesn't think it's very wordy. It is a very wordy game, the second disc specifically, <laughs> where it's all, you know, cutscene battle, cutscene battle, but it has some very epic scenes in between there. Um, as for the actual mechs, like, you can't really go wrong with uh, going from, uh, you know, fighting as, like, a person to actually fighting as a giant mech, and you can, you know, get in and out of it whenever you want and you upgrade it and, you know, become more powerful as you go on. So it's pretty awesome. What about you, Sushi? Yeah, that's a pretty good one. I haven't played Xenogears in a long time, and I've only played a fair portion of the first disc. I actually I moved away from home at that point, so I, I had to put it down, and I, and I haven't been able to pick it up. I do have it on PSN again, and I just I bought it. But I was really excited when it came out, and I just haven't been able to find the proper time, I guess, to get my mind into it. And to know that I can actually sit down and play the game without big interruptions of playing it for five hours and then not playing it for two weeks for some reason. But I will get back into it. It's a story that you definitely want to, you know, be focused in on. You can't take breaks or else you might get lost with some of the dialogue and stuff like that. Yeah, that's how it seems, so. I say playing through it multiple times, which I know would be a chore to do, but when you play through it once and then you play through it again, you know, the pick up on certain nuances in the, throughout the game that you completely miss out on the first time you play. And you're like, sure. why didn't I notice this before? So Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Sushi, did you have anything left that you... I have a couple here still, sure. I have the shotgun and the BFG from Doom. <laughs> nice. Awesome. I, I really awesome. love... The shotgun was really, really fun to play. It's, it's just great. I love shooting those banshees, those banshee skull heads that fly at you and they scream and then you just shoot them and they explode. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that that shotgun a lot. And the BFG is is got that really cool weird charge sound that it would make before it would fire and things would just vaporize across the screen. <laughs> the green beam or whatever I think. Yeah, yeah. Call. How about uh, you, Taylor? Uh, something. Well, yeah, I figured that you might have uh, mentioned earlier was the E tank from the Mega Man series. Oh yeah, forgot about that actually. Really. So I don't know. I, th those those came in handy. <laughs> I'm so good. I don't need e tanks. <laughs> well, I I am not. So I. You're not, <laughs> you're not shy to the concept of an e tank. Uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm okay with using e tanks just because I don't play them enough. Nor I guess I have enough gaming skill to not use them. So. Now, didn't they add the M tank after that as well, which filled up all your weapons or something and your health? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that one's really good. That's a really good one. So, okay, uh, Matt? Um, going on with Mega Man some more, uh, Mega Man X3, when you finally get to use uh, Zero Sword, basically. Um, I really like, because throughout the entire Mega Man X series, you're kind of like, you know, I really wish I could use Zero Sword. And then finally in X3, they, they let you, you know, use it as, like, you know, part of your charge. Um, I thought that was really awesome. What about you guys? I haven't played X3, actually, so. Okay. Did I you play like any of the Xs? I've played, I love X1, is, is one of my favorite games probably ever, 
probably mm-hmm. well, debatably my favorite uh, Mega Man game too. So, mm. and Taylor, I, I've played it. It's been a long time. Isn't in three you switch between you? You can call in zero. You, you can call in zero, but at the initial point of the game, you get to finally use uh, the sword. I believe as a it's like the final charge shot almost, mm-hmm. you know, glowing green. So I always thought that was really awesome because you know when I was playing it as a kid, I always like you know see zero. I'm like I really wish I could use the sword. So I always thought it was awesome in X3 they let you do that. Um, and then I guess I'll I have one more Mega Man one here, uh, which is the um, in Mega Man 6 you get to use the uh, power suit or whatever, where it's basically the rush power suit and you get to fly. <laughs> yeah. I really like I really like getting to fly and charge up and shoot your fists out. I thought that was really fun. What about you, Taylor? You got a laugh out of that. Well, I I love that just because I like how he turned red and uh, I. And how like the the punch, mm. I love the the punch attack too from with the armor and stuff and flying. Though it was kind of brief, it was I'd like that extra bit of security blanket when it comes to jumping, especially in Mega Man games. Yeah, definitely. And sushi. Uh, I actually managed to miss the second arc of Mega Man games when they were initially released. So mm. four, five, and six were just beyond what I'd played. I'd only played two and three specifically. I know what you guys are talking about. I just haven't played six at all. Fair enough. So Taylor, any more on your list? I have a a bit more, and I'll just kind of rattle them off. But sure. before I forget, the the thing you were thinking of for East Two, if I remember correctly, it's a spell called Transform. Oh, okay. I want to say it's something basic like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I, I, had... wanna, I was thinking it was something like that too. So yeah, if memory serves me right. So um. That being said, first thing up, uh, I have on the list, Calorie Mate for Metal Gear Solid slash The Real World. So, honestly, that's kind of what got me into eating Calorie Mate was from playing Metal Gear Solid. Are you still alive? Yes. It's keeping you alive. Okay. It's keeping me alive. <laughs> he's, got a, he's got a Calorie Mate IV hooked up to him right now. <laughs> slowly dripping into his veins. <laughs> what, what flavor do you drip into your vein, Taylor? Maple. Maple, okay. <laughs> So we could we could put a tap in you and, and, and tap you out of maple. Yes, <laughs> get some maple syrup out of you. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> um, that uh, the next thing I put I put on here was Fire Emblem from the the Fire Emblem series. And throughout the the series, it takes on different uh, it's it's different things throughout the game. And I I, I honestly really really like how it, it, it changes in each game. You know, you have, like, the shield and stuff like that. And even though in Sacred Stones it was more like, you know, like that kind of thing, and they don't really mention Fire Emblem, but how it changes, and even though it's this cool, mystical thing, and you don't get it sometimes, uh, <laughs> but I really liked it. thought it was cool. I don't know. What, what do you guys think of the Fire Emblem? I don't even remember getting the Fire Emblem. <laughs> no. I haven't played... I haven't Neither played... do I. Many uh, of them. I, I've only played the the two Game Boy games and then the remake on DS. So, in the in the first one, Marth gets it, and it's, it it helps his character not be so crappy. <laughs> in the original, in the original slash the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom remakes, I, like, oh, okay, he's pretty buffed in the the DS one, but it it was it was really nice to have. So, cool. Um, the six books of East. Mm-hmm. Sure. So that was that was one that I had on here. The box from Terra Enigma. I've never played Terra Enigma. No, oh, well, it never made it out of it. Uh, out of, it made it in Japan and PAL, but never made it to North America. Matt, right. did you ever play it? Um, I, I'm looking at hopefully getting a, a reproduction of it eventually, but I haven't played it yet. Okay, I played well, some of the other games. Uh, like uh, Soul Blazer and Illusion of Gaia. Yeah, uh, I have those too. Uh, not a big fan of Illusion of Gaia for some reason. It stumped me as a kid. It, it made me. It made you cry. It made yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. so, man tears. Man tears. <laughs> Baby man tears. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was just really cool. Kind of like hopping into the box and being able to like, equip things and use your items and stuff that way. A little slow for a menu for that kind of game, I think. But I don't think it was breaking in any way. So uh, the I, I I would say the the Mithril Sword from Final Fantasy 1, just because once you bought that, it was almost like a sense of accomplishment because it cost so much in the original Final Fantasy game. 
And so, and when you finally get it for your warrior, if you have one, it makes the job so much easier, and it leads to finally getting out of the intro area and being able to explore more of the world. So, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Uh, Monado from Xenoblade. I'm not going to really touch too much, because Xenoblade's finally been announced for North America region. Yay! So, yeah, uh, don't spoil it yet. Spoilers! It's awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when you, uh, down the road, it, it just, I, I thought it was really cool, and what they do with it. Uh, the gate, the initial gate from Star Ocean 2 that sends Claude to Dana's planet. Very sweet. So, and sings Star Ocean 2 is w one of my favorite games, and I, I, it sings it's the whole start of the story. I thought that was really cool. So, <laughs> Um, Princesses Peach question mark question mark question mark from Super Mario RPG, because I totally thought that was a brawl. Do you remember? No, I don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> I only remember. I only remember the uh, was it the frying pan you get for her, which is her best weapon. Well, this isn't something for her. It's when you're like scouring through her drawer or her, like. Oh yeah 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 okay. Just find the uh, princess question mark question mark question mark or freely under things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a kid, I always thought it was like her brawl or something. I always giggled. I was like, ah, Mario is a pervert. So, <laughs> I, th I think you were uh, you were on the on the ball there as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, woo! Uh, um, uh, the rocket launcher from the Resident Evil series. Okay. Like early on, because that was kind of like signifying, especially like when you got the red one and stuff. It's like, ah, I win. Game over. So, uh, yeah, always like the rocket launcher from Resident Evil. Uh, the grapple beam from Super Metroid. Yeah, that's a cool one. That's similar to the ability to grapple from Castlevania. The later ones? In well, in four, Castlevania we 4, how you could swing oh, in. Oh, oh, sorry, right, I right, can't right. Really clarify, but it was kind of similar to that. Right, and, well, the the main reason was because you could kill the uh, third boss. The, what, what is it? The, the, I don't remember his name. The water boss that would grab you and then, like, whip you with its tail. You could use the grapple beam on the, the sides of the, the the little panels that you blew off that had electrical currents, and you could just drain his HP that way. Mm -hmm. Put the grapple on it. Did, did, did you guys ever do that? No. no. I don't think I did either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was how I beat the boss the first time, because I was getting so frustrated because it was whooping my ass so much. And then I was just getting angry and just kind of, you know, when you get angry, instead of, like, throwing it, you just start, like, yeah, and you just start mashing buttons. And <laughs> out of sheer luck, uh, it landed on, it got onto the grapple thing, and it hooked onto it, and it started draining. I was like, what is this? This is so awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, good, good, good rage. Good rage. Um, Little Nemo's Candy from Little Nemo the Dream Master. Yeah, that's a good game. Yeah. So I, I thought that was awesome. And last one is the Banana Peel Arrows from The Last Story. Yes. <sighs> and there is a game we don't have. Another game that's, yeah, not out, but it... May not I, get. Unfortunately. But I crack up every time, no matter what. Because you can use the arrows not only on mo online multiplayer, but in the game, and you can shoot them at just townspeople, and they'll slip and fall. <laughs> That's like, pretty awesome. <laughs> so it's it's fantastic, and in multiplayer too, you 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 could shoot it at people and they'll slip and fall. So it's it's fantastic. <laughs> mm. So yeah, sorry, long list, but uh. fair enough. Okay. Do you have any uh, more there, Matt? Or yeah, I, I have a couple. I'll, I'll breeze through them here. Hopefully, uh, the first one was uh, I believe it's the Excalibur from uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. It's the one. It's the default sword that uh, Orlando gets, I believe. Oh God. Um, uh, and he's already a buff character as it is, but he gets Excalibur, which basically auto-hastes him. So he's not only OP, but he has auto-haste, which I thought is awesome. So I like the Excalibur from that game because of the auto-haste. I liked uh, the Tanuki suit from uh, Mario 3, the one that allows nice. you to turn into a stone. Yep. Uh, specifically, not the one that makes you fly, because I think they're separate, but I think they're both called the Tanuki suit, um, if I remember correctly. Because I, I always remember when I was long, young, I never knew how to turn into stone. And then when I finally figured it out, there was a, a sense of accomplishment, even though it's kind of useless. Uh, what else here? The Home Run Bat from uh, Smash Bros. I really like that just because uh, you can either throw it and automatically knock somebody out, or you know, if you're really good with it, you can smash people out and 
constantly or get two people, so it's a very satisfying weapon. Let's see. Any kind of, uh, this, this one's a little broad, but uh, any kind of armor that's, you know, multi-pieced armor where you have to get different sets. So like in Dragon Quest uh, Eight or something like that where you had to get the bunny suit. You had to get different, uh, like the ears, you had to get the tail and the, the actual suit to, get, to make it uh, all one item. So I like stuff like that. Or just uh, armor in general, it changes appearance of characters. Um, I really like that stuff. Um, any item, any kind of return item for dungeon crawlers that allow you to go back to town. Yeah. So uh, th those are key, um, especially for uh, like uh, Etrian Odyssey or even the original Dragon Quest when you need to return back to your save point. Cool. Those, are, those are lifesavers. Um, uh, Metroid, uh, the speed booster, the thing that lets you run really fast in Super Metroid. Because you remember if you used to be able to stop and you could launch yourself when you were growing, glowing yellow. Yes. So I always thought that was cool. Um, and two more here. The Ghosts and Goblins, the dagger. Yes. Um, the, specifically in Super Ghosts and Goblins for the Super Nintendo where you get the green armor and then they become laser beam daggers. Right. I always really got a kick out of that. And uh, last was the smokes from Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, it seems almost useless until you get to that one point where you have to see the lasers. So, it's pretty awesome. Don't ask like where you hit them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, any, any of those I rattled off real quickly that you want to go off on? or? Uh... Uh, I'll, I'll quickly jump in for the, the ghouls and ghosts. Uh, I agree, I, the knives are really really helpful and just because of their speed and because you can throw three it, it's incredibly easy to use them and they're so much better than pretty much every other weapon in the game yeah basically and, and as I said the uh, laser daggers are just awesome right yeah they're really really fast and they add that extra the power boost on them so they're really cool and then with the gold armor you get that flame dragon type spell yeah. which mm -hmm. if you know how to use it properly is actually really useful it's hard to time it correctly yeah, it's funny how we said uh, the, the daggers or the lances in Castlevania were basically useless, yet, you know, yeah. ghosts and goblins, they're, they're super useful. You yeah. need them, basically. I guess, uh, make mention of the, you made mention of the home run bat. That one is, I, I really like that, that item as well. Um, though I don't, other than throwing it, I never try to do the, I never, I never attempt to hit people. Like with the the the, the swing, yeah, just, you just throw it right away. Oh yeah, I always just throw it right away. <laughs> <laughs> I just grab it and just throw it because, uh, yeah, that's I'm just, I, I, well because usually I like to pick uh, slower, heavier characters mm -hmm. that pack a punch. So, yeah. um, so basically any sort of really big character, like especially in brawl, I like Ike. So uh, the home run bat really isn't as needed as much for me. Uh, well, you have those charge attacks that almost do the same thing. Right. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. it the, the bat is a good way of making his slow attacks a little bit quicker. Mm. So, but that, that, was, that was quite a nice list. The smoke's honorable mention for the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so. Cool. Yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, Sushi, did you have anything else, or did you want to get... I have two or three just really, really quick ones as well. Okay. I, I really enjoy the ice beam from Metroid. Just mm -hmm. the fact that it lets you build platforms off of monsters was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones were in Bomberman, the max flame power, the, the kind of gold flame power-up that gives you the flame that goes across the screen for your bombs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was really helpful. And finally, Rambi the Rhino from Donkey Kong Country. I love that oh. effect of him running and just those guys going, ah, when you hit them and they just go, <laughs> I, I, I love that that first stage and getting that is just awesome. Mm, so awesome. But yeah, that's it. Um, just to go off on your Bomberman, I, I love the uh, versus Bomberman against people. Um, the the max power, but like combining all these items together just makes for like a crazy mash match, especially if you're spamming. Right. Um, I always try to go for uh, what was it? I I. For some reason, I like getting the poison because I like affecting, uh, you know, running around and affecting yeah, everybody yeah. else. You know, <laughs> screw them over, basically. It's so much fun for some reason. Especially um, if you're losing. 
Yeah, especially if you don't have any power-ups. You just see a skull, you grab it, and you start infecting everyone else. <laughs> um, and I also like, you know, all the uh, all the pets and stuff, like the uh, the kangaroos you can get. Right. So it's, it's just a fun game overall for power-ups. That's fun when you're invincible, too, and if you can catch a bomb and you can keep bombing as, as you're invincible, and it's, mm. the trail is following you around as, as you're bombing and, until invincibility finishes. But that's a good way to get people trapped and, and really angry, too. You, you get the guy who has the uh, full flame, as you said, and then you get a poison uh, that makes you drop bombs <laughs> on your own. Yeah. It leads to uh, fast devastation. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wins! <laughs> Uh, I guess uh, one that I'll point out is uh, you mentioned the ice beam, and actually I had that written down at first, but then I switched it to the grapple beam uh, just because of remembering fighting that boss and stuff because the ice beam was really, really awesome. Yeah, so. it's a really cool item. All right, well, what do you guys say we move into a game then? <laughs> Time for the game! Sounds exciting. Yeah, I don't think this is too hard a, a challenge today. I, I hope not anyways. <sighs> <laughs> I hear a big groan and a. Uh, uh. <laughs> I would say I make it hard on myself. So <laughs> yeah, I think you do actually. <laughs> you, you're you're too concerned about winning. I I must <laughs> win. But I haven't been able to quite put these at random yet, so I decided to choose this particular game that I hope is not too hard. But I decided to go with games that start with the letter B. I just decided B. If that's cool with you guys. Is somebody getting paper out? What is this? Yeah, I, I heard some paper ruffling there. It's not me. No, I, I moved my book. Oh, sorry, sorry. Whatever, whatever you No say. typing. Better not hear no <laughs> typing in the background. <laughs> Taylor is disqualified. No, I was moving my book. Because I have yeah, the, yeah. the paper with the, the list of uh, the items. And I was All moving right. so I could sit in my on my couch and not on my floor. Oh, that just sounds lazy. <laughs> Laying on your couch, really taking this game seriously. Yeah, I'm sitting on my couch now. I heard, it was hurting on sitting on the floor. <laughs> all right, all right. So is that okay with you guys? Games that start with the letter B. Sounds exciting. Sounds like I'm going to fail real quick. <laughs> well, why don't Sounds you go cool. first then, Taylor, so you can at least get one in? Oh, all right. It's uh, Bionic Commando. Nice. Uh, how about Matt next? Bomberman. Cool. I will go with Blaster Master. Okay, and then I'll go Bubble Bubble. Hmm. Braid Spencer Musashi. Nice. Braid. Braid? Braid. Oh, okay. It's an indie game. Mm. Um. Balloon Fight. Uh. Baseball Stars. Hmm, good. Bad Dudes. Uh. <laughs> it's nice. That's a good one. And beat him and need him. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Um. Oh man. Is he losing it already? Ah uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Batman you have a time for the NES. Batman for the NES. Okay. I will choose Blue Dragon. Oh, nice. Battletoads. Nice. Uh, Breath of Fire. Ooh, good one. That's a really good one. I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go Biohazard. Oh. Are we Are we counting that, Matt? Yes, okay, we'll count it. It's okay. okay, good, because I was going to say that one. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so okay, uh, my turn? Yes. I'm up? Okay, uh, Bahamut Lagoon. Um, uh, Bonk. Ah, it was my next one. I'll go with um, Blazing Lasers. Oh, man. What, what, blazing, what, what is that? Uh, oh, it's a turbo graphic shooter. shooter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll go with Brandish. Uh... <laughs> Matt's really milking the time, the time <laughs> yeah. frame here. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I'm, ha I'm just you helping think, you, Taylor. If you think you're done, you can call yourself out. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll knock myself out here. All right. <laughs> well, you still got some good ones in. So, is it my go then? Uh, I believe so. 
All right, Blaze Blue. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I didn't think about that one. Uh, is Beetlejuice a game? <laughs> I think there's an NES one, yeah. Woo! Okay. <laughs> Brigandine? Oh, yeah, this is this is probably it for me. Um, Dear God, so she's going to mop the floor with us here. Yeah. Um, um, some people already said Bomberman, right? Yeah, yeah I think Bomberman one. was right at the start. Ah, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to have to cap myself out. No! I don't know of any! Like, I, I, uh, I, I, what I got in was a lot more than what I thought I would get in. Yeah, no, we did pretty well, though. I, my next one was going to be um, Bangayo. I don't know what that is at all. Uh, Dreamcast and uh, what else? Ton I think it's on ton. Xbox Live now. I don't have an Xbox. Yeah, it's, well, it's on game. DS as well. Uh, what, what, what is it? <laughs> it's, a, it's a treasure kind of shooter puzzle game. Yeah. It's hard to explain. You'd have to kind of see a video of it. Basically, you're kind of this little robot, and you're, you've got weapons that have to be used to finish stages that are puzzle stages. And it's a pretty fun game. Really challenging. It's pretty unique as well. Yeah, yeah. You can just shoot gigantic spreads of missiles across the screen and stuff. and It's pretty cool. Let's see. All right, well, we still got in some good ones. We got in Battletoads, Bomberman, Blaster Master, a lot of old NES titles. I like how Beetlejuice somehow came up. <laughs> <laughs> that was the only thing I had left. As you Back to the see. future. Back to the future. Oh, God oh, damn my it. God. Brandish. <laughs> I said Brandish. Yeah, you Brandish was brought up. Yeah, yeah I did say Brandish. <laughs> I'm sure every game ends and it's a bunch of games come to your mind after. It always happens. Uh, I don't know, that, 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 that's tapping the well for me. I don't really... B is an uncommon one. Yeah, B is not that common, actually, but... I had Bonanza Bros... I don't know. Bonanza Bros. <laughs> ah, that really weird two-player game from the Genesis era. I don't know how to explain it. It's some sort of thief, thief game or something. I don't know. Cops and robbers. Not, not very good. Yeah, it's not very good. No. Uh, it's challenging. <laughs> yeah. Bucky O'Hare. I don't know what that is. NES no. game. Yeah, a really fun NES game. It was, a, it was a cartoon and a comic book. Never heard of either. <laughs> no. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Anyways, I'm winning the series 2-1 I, I call shenanigans for you picking it instead of randomi- randomizing it sushi Well, alright, okay 2-1 <laughs> with, with an asterisk <laughs> Asterisk for <forever. laughs> You got the Barry Bonds asterisk <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, uh, well with that being said Uh Thank you for joining, Matt. It's uh, It was a pleasure to talk with you. Yeah, not a problem. It was fun to be here. So yeah, Matt, for- thanks for coming. You had a lot of really great item ideas, actually. and I'm really a little disappointed you just stole Rock's Feather right at the start. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, it was, it was on not, the top of my great. list. Yeah, it was great <laughs> that we all agreed on that one, though. So, pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, really good ideas there. And, uh, yeah, any any time. Any time, good sir. Yes, please come back again. Oh, uh, hopefully uh, you invite me back. Never. Just Never. So. Oh, <laughs> so much, so much love from Taylor over here. I can hear it. Yeah. Well, in episode one, he wanted all the love, so <sighs> I did. He's a he selfish man, and if he doesn't get it, he cries man tears. <laughs> Baby man. Establish that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so. found a secret. You found him out. <sighs> so. Back to the rabbit hole with you. Yep. 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 Uh, that being said, uh, thank you, Sushi. Uh, we, I know we said that we were going to stop doing this, but... Yes, it's time hey, to stop. It's time to stop. All right, then. Yeah, it's time to stop. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, uh, any any last words on Sushi? Just stay tuned for the next episode. We have to come up with a topic, but I'm sure we will. Yeah, we have, we have a topic, we swear. We, we have a pile of topics to choose from, so stay tuned. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no, su- sushi sounds pretty uh, unsure about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no we, we do, we do. We do, we do. We just haven't chosen a particular topic yet. So. Fair enough. I look forward to it. All right. Well, well, we look yeah. forward to having you on again. Exactly. Sounds good. Just uh, harass me. Hopefully our, our timetables fit together because we have like 12 hours or so difference here. Right. Yeah. A little difficult, but we'll, we'll work it out somehow. So yeah, It all works out. <laughs> so. All right. Thank you guys for listening and have a good day.